Pokemon games are well known for cycling through features and mechanics with every new game, and routinely removing old features to make room for new features. Some of these, like Mega Evolutions and Z-Moves, are the marquee sacrificial lambs for this kind of practice, but there are also a lot of underrated features that are amazing that have been removed from the games as well, and should definitely make a comeback. Like, for instance, the Versus Seeker. The Versus Seeker is an item that appeared in Fire Red and Leaf Green, the Sinnoh games, and their remakes, and it allows you to re-battle trainers throughout the overworld that you've already battled. In Fire Red and Leaf Green in particular, I thought this feature was a godsend, as it gave you a legitimate training option for your Pokemon after you had already ran through most of the game, so you didn't have to just grind against wild Pokemon, and it also added an immense amount of playability to the games as well that personally kept me playing them significantly longer than I probably otherwise would have. When you run out of trainers to battle in a game, it always feels like that sad nail in the coffin to your playthrough that lets you know it's going to be coming to an end soon, because you're just running out of stuff to do. But bringing back the Versus Seeker, or some version of it, would be a super simple way to greatly extend the life of newer Pokemon games. And I think it would also be a great fit in the new open world format that will likely be sticking around in newer titles. Speaking of which, one feature from a newer title that should definitely become a permanent thing in my opinion is the Linking Cord. This is actually an item more than a feature, but it was an item introduced in Legends Arceus that straight up eliminated the trade requirement to evolve trade evolutions, meaning that all you had to do was give these Pokemon the Linking Cord item and they would evolve. This also extended to every other trade evolution as well, and those who had to be traded along with an item simply just had to be given the item instead. As mentioned, this only just became a thing in Legends Arceus, but it also wasn't a thing in Scarlet and Violet, so I'm gonna go ahead and say it right now before it gets dropped for good that this NEEDS to be a permanent thing. Obviously, it kinda happened in Legends Arceus due to the unique setting of the game, but honestly, it is time. Trade evolutions had their purpose back in the day, and they served their purpose well, but now the intention to connect players with each other isn't really as needed as it was back then, which was kinda the point of making trade evolutions, since we're all so connected now anyway, thanks to the internet and social media. Plus, there's also just a lot of other ways in Pokemon games nowadays that this can be achieved otherwise. I'm not saying to get rid of trading altogether or anything, but for trade evolutions, the way that Legends Arceus did it definitely needs to become the new standard going forward. And real quick before we go forward, I wanted to shout out all the amazing people who have picked up a plush of my mascot, Fulkachi. Having my own plush has literally been a dream of mine for about as long as I've had this channel, and your support made it happen. Not only that, but for those of you who have picked up one of these soft, squishy little guys, you have directly supported my ability to keep making videos for you, and my ability to do fun, next level type of stuff like a custom plush. So honestly, thank you so, so much. If you haven't grabbed one yet though, you can still do so with the link in the description. Fulkachi is super high quality, he makes a great addition to any gamer merch collection, and when you pick one up, you also get a special Fulkachi promo card from the upcoming Histrobi Chronicles TCG for free. This card won't be made available any other way either, so it's also exclusive, and it's about as cool of a TCG card as I have ever seen. So pick yourself up one today with the link in the description, and if you do, you'll not only have some extremely high quality merch, you will also have my eternal thanks and more fun content to look forward to for years to come, because your support makes it happen. So give it a look with the link in the description, and now, back to our regularly scheduled programming. One mechanic that is underrated simply because it largely operates in the background is abilities that have effects in the overworld. 
This was a thing that started in Emerald, which gave abilities even more utility by allowing them to affect the gameplay outside of battle instead of just in battle. But recently, that functionality has all but been wiped out, with Scarlet and Violet removing the overworld effects of pretty much any ability that still had them to this point. While I think it is possible that this could in part be due to the transition to an open world game in Scarlet and Violet and all of the extra complexities that come along with that, this at the same time is something that absolutely has got to come back. There is literally no good reason whatsoever to remove overworld ability effects, as they do nothing but enhance the gameplay and add fun and interesting layers to it that add even more value to the Pokemon that you choose to have on your team. There are admittedly some features that I think are a little more understandable to remove and replace game to game, but this is one that should absolutely be a staple for every Pokemon game going forward. So hopefully Game Freak gets their act together on this one so that it's only a temporary absence rather than a permanent removal. Another thing that was unfortunately removed in Scarlet and Violet and needs to be brought back immediately is Pokerus. Pokerus is the iconic Pokemon virus that actually benefits your Pokemon by doubling the EVs that they gain in battle. Pokerus has been a constant since Generation 2, but was pretty much removed entirely from Scarlet and Violet. Some have speculated that this possibly could have been due to the COVID pandemic and wanting to be sensitive to that, and while that does make sense, Pokerus was still present in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, which released just a year prior. So Pokerus' removal from Scarlet and Violet actually seems way more confusing than it might initially appear. Regardless of what the actual reason was for removing the Pokerus though, I think it definitely needs to make a return as soon as possible. It's been around for almost the entirety of the franchise, it's a fun thing to have in the games, and it's a really cool mechanic in general. So whether it be in Legends ZA or in Generation 10, I think it definitely needs to come back soon. While we're on this topic though, another thing of a similar variety that definitely needs to make a return is poison hurting your Pokemon outside of battle. This hasn't been a thing since Gen 5, so it has been a hot minute since we've had this feature, and while it might seem weird to want this back since it's an annoying feature that is actually detrimental to your Pokemon, that is also what made it great. It made the games more difficult and challenging, and provided more that could go on outside of battles, and made what happened in battles all the more meaningful. Basically, it just added a challenging layer to the games that really made a memorable impact on those of us who have played the early Pokemon games, even if it was a bit annoying. It's also annoying that this feature has been removed, considering that it probably has to do with wanting to make the games easier, or at least less challenging to get through. It's a common opinion at this point that most people want more challenge in Pokemon rather than less, and since the games already give you free potions and free healing items every chance they get anyway, bringing this back really wouldn't be that much of a deterrent at all. So yeah, if anyone at Game Freak is watching this, I would really love to experience the rush of anxiety of trying to make it to a Pokemon Center before my Pokemon tragically faints from its illness again. So if you can make that happen, that'd be great. This next one is a bit different because it's a bit more niche, but I want to see some crazy rare Pokemon again. And I don't just mean one-time encounters or 1% 1 encounters, cause those haven't really left, I mean like insanely rare Pokemon, like the Feebasses and Munchlaxes of the world. Feebas is well known for being so rare that you could only encounter it on a few select tiles of the overworld map, let alone just one or two locations, and Munchlax is almost just as bad as it can only be found in a few select honey trees in Sinnoh 1% of the time. These days, these two aren't as hard to obtain as they once were, and while rare and elusive Pokemon do still exist, there aren't really any that are this hardcore anymore. 
If it were up to me, I would want to have a Pokemon that you can only catch on Thursdays at night between the times of 11 and 11.05, and even then it only has like a 5% encounter rate. Like, I want to have some brutally rare Pokemon be a thing again. Because that's honestly how a Pokemon like Feebas has made a name for itself and became noteworthy in the first place. Because otherwise, it would honestly just be the throwaway pre-evolution for my Lodic. And also, it's not like you're making every single Pokemon in the game that rare either. It's just one or two within an entire game. It might make catching those one or two Pokemon insanely frustrating, but it would also make catching them once you finally do it all the more satisfying and enjoyable. And as I mentioned before, it would also make the Pokemon themselves all the more memorable. Meanwhile, another category of Pokemon I think is severely underrated that would definitely be fun to see make a comeback in a new Pokemon game are Obstacle Pokemon. These are Pokemon like Snorlax, Sudowoodo, and Kecleon, whose main functions in the regions that they debuted in was to block your progress as the player until you did what you had to do to get past them. And then, once you did that, you also got the chance to catch a rare Pokemon that you couldn't get any other way. I have always thought that this was a fun mechanic of the first few generations, and I think it would be fun to see a more modern take on it, especially with the more open, explorable nature of new Pokemon games. I can just imagine wandering around when all of a sudden I stumble upon some kind of weird Pokemon that won't let me cross a river or go through a forest until I have the item I need to get them to move. I think there is a lot of potential with that kind of Pokemon, and I would love to see them revived for a new game. This next feature isn't quite as underrated as the others, but I just feel like Seasons is a thing that definitely needs to be revisited in a new game someday. Introduced in Gen 5, it was definitely more of a generational feature than some of these others are, but at the same time, Seasons are obviously a thing all around the world, so it doesn't exactly make sense to only have them in one Pokemon region. Additionally, they obviously did a ton of cool stuff to the gameplay too, like change the look of the overworld, make locations accessible and inaccessible, and even change the forms of Pokemon, which only happened to two Pokemon in total, which is an absolute travesty. I feel like maybe this one has been held back due to its complexity, because it's probably hard to implement all of those changes into a game and have everything still work smoothly, but like I said, seasons are kind of a universal thing that happen everywhere, and now that they've also been made a thing in Pokemon, I feel like they've got to be brought back at some point. There is a ton of potential here, it's just plain to see, and I honestly think it would be a signature addition to any game that it was added to. In a similar vein to Seasons, another feature that's a little more generational, but I think should make a return, is Secret Bases. First off, they were both in Generation 3 and Gen 4, so it's not like they were totally exclusive to just one generation. And second, while I'm not necessarily in love with this feature, and I just think it's a solid, decent feature more than anything, I think it would be a perfect fit for the modern game. With open world Pokemon being a thing, it would be amazing to go out and explore for the perfect spot to put your secret base. And then they could add a whole flurry of decorations that you could buy at all the Pokemarts, which personally was my favorite part of secret bases. And then, with the power of modern technology, you could connect your game to your friend's game and have their secret base show up in your game, and you could go out into that open world and try and find it, and when you do, their avatar could even be in their secret base, and you could battle them with the last team that they had when you connected your games. If they did that, I am confident that that one feature would take over an entire game and people wouldn't even really care about anything else. And the crazy thing is that that's not even that unreasonable of a request. I feel like that's something that could pretty feasibly be accomplished. 
And that would even address the issue that I mentioned before of wanting to connect players together. So it's honestly like the perfect thing for a Pokemon game to have. So hopefully, Game Freak will wise up and give secret bases a grand return someday. I've got another niche feature to talk about next, because it's not quite as cut and dry as some of the others, but it's something that I would love to see more of just the same, and that is big side quest characters. Side quests have never been a huge thing in Pokemon to begin with, but there have been a couple of times where Game Freak have included bigger side quests and alternate storylines with unique characters that they revolve around, such as Curtis and Yancey in Black and White 2, and Emma in Pokemon X and Y. With these two examples, we actually got to see development in these side characters, to where they became more substantial than just random NPCs, and the quests that they were a part of were multi-pronged, multi-faceted adventures of their own that added a ton to their respective games. I honestly think it would be fun to have more side quest characters like this with big quests that revolve around them, because then we would have more characters to enjoy aside from your typical gym leaders, evil team members, and rivals, and we would also have additional plot lines to discover in the game that could get us all the more invested into our playthroughs and would act as a perfect complement to the main story. Out of all of these different features though, which one is the one that you want to see brought back the most? Let me know in the comments and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. If you want, you can also grab a Focacci plush with the link in the description to directly help out the channel even more and videos just like this, which is super, super appreciated. With that said, thank you guys so much for watching this video, I really appreciate it, and until the next one, as always, I will smell you guys later.